Welcome back, artists. Today I want to do some stencil artwork, stencil painting. I actually did some yesterday. I don't know when I'm going to put that video out, but I'll show that to you later. But I did a stencil where I was kind of stenciling out some words and then painting behind them and then peeling the stencils off. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Uh, today what I'd like to do is kind of the same type of deal, but I'm going to use more than one layer of stenciling and painting. Um, so yeah, that's the game plan for today. Now, anytime I think about stencil art, I think about the artist named Banksy. So I want to tell you a little bit about this guy, show you a little bit of his artwork. Most of what I'm going to show you is right off his own Instagram account, which you can, you know, look up for free. I'm sure he won't mind me using it for this educational video. Anyway, uh, who even is Banksy? Uh, nobody's really sure. That's, that's the weird part about this. So he, we know he's from the UK, the United Kingdom. He's a British artist but he likes to kind of keep his identity unknown. So no one's exactly sure who he is. Now what he does, he does murals. So he's painting like in public on walls and things like that. And he uses a lot of stencils in his artwork. So that's why I thought this would be a good art artist to show you guys. So uh, Banksy, a lot of his artworks are kind of like playful. He likes to show things that kind of contradict themselves. So for ex example, this artwork right here says, you know, you have a kid with a crayon drawing on the wall. Since he's painting on walls, a lot of his paintings are paintings of people painting on walls too, interestingly. And he likes to, like I said, he likes to kind of contradict himself. So this little kid sitting here uh, writing up on the wall, one original thought is worth a thousand mindless quotings. And then he has a Greek philosopher quoted as the person who said that. So it's a quote about how one original thought is worth a bunch of quoting. So it kind of contradicts itself. A lot of his artworks have this kind of... Uh, back and forth between them. So here's another one. You have uh, obviously a little girl holding up an umbrella and it's raining just on the inside, right? So kind of the opposite of what you expect. A lot of his artworks are kind of like that. So what he'll do is he'll use stencils like to put up on the building and then he'll typically use uh, spray paints to create the actual artworks. So here's one where you have an artist or not an artist, you actually have someone, I guess an anti-artist, someone cleaning the art off of the wall. And what he's written on the wall is, what we do in life echoes in eternity. And then you see he's created this artwork of somebody cleaning the wall and erasing the word eternity. So again, we think of eternity, something that lasts forever. And then of course we have that being erased. So it's a lot of kind of opposites back and forth in his artwork. Draw the raised bridge. So you have this little kid holding up like his little toy sword here, and there's a crayon attached to the sword. So instead of raise the draw bridge, draw the raised bridge, right? Um, a lot of his artworks are like kind of just playful little visual jokes. So if we look at this one, you know, we have someone cleaning up and I guess putting the putting all the dirt behind the curtain here, but the curtain is actually the wall, and she's like lifting up the painted surface of the wall to reveal the bricks underneath but of course the bricks are the actual painted part that's the part that he's painted on the wall a motif you see a lot in his artworks is a balloon i'm going to show you another one with these in a minute but again we think of balloons as this very fragile thing this slightest little sharp thing will pop them and then here we have a balloons that has you know a bunch of band-aids on it like it's been cut up but it's okay Got this little robot here so instead of painting you know words on the wall the robot i guess is painting the barcode on the wall Banksy does a lot of, he's got these little rat characters he uses in a lot of his artwork. So here's his little rats kind of observing the Eiffel Tower in Paris on a little street corner. Here we have a very classic looking artwork of a guy holding a flower bouquet as the petals fall off. This is not a Banksy artwork. This is actually an artwork by a famous artist named Johan Vermeer, really famous artist. This is probably one of his most famous pieces. This is called The Girl with the Pearl Earring. And of course you can see the big pearl hanging on her ear so you understand why. And Banksy's done kind of, sometimes he'll do like his own version or his own almost parody of famous artworks. So here's his where he has found this thing kind of sticking out of the wall and he's used that as the earring to recreate this artwork. Um, so this is something interesting he did. Since no one really knows who he is, he had set up at some point a little stand in uh, New York City. I think he might have done this in more than one city where he'll just set up like a little art stand and sell art. And of course, nobody knows who he is. So if you just happen upon this person in big cities, there's people all over the place kind of set up with stands selling art to you. 
So he was selling prints for $60. Now, he's an incredibly famous artist at this point. So if you have an original Banksy artwork, it's actually worth tons and tons of money. We're going to talk more about that in just a second. But uh, he was sitting here selling original artworks for $60 a piece. And if you happen to stop and buy one for $60, you now own a multi-million dollar piece of artwork. Lucky you. Um, but of course, he didn't say, hey, I'm Banksy. Nobody knew, right? So interesting. This is one of his most iconic pieces. This is one of the ones he's really known for. You see a little girl kind of holding or reaching toward her balloon, letting it go. Um, and there's a caption on this artwork over to the side that says, there is always hope. And this is one of his more iconic pieces. And he actually made a print of this piece that he like signed. And so they knew it was actually an original Banksy artwork. He put it in a frame and he, this is actually recently, this was in the past year that this happened and it was at this big art auction. And so, oh wow, you can actually own an original Banksy artwork. Whoa. So people are, you know, rich people are bidding just Oh, I'll pay 100000 for it. I'll pay 200000 for it. So this artwork gets to the point where it's like over a million dollars. And then, okay, any other bids? Okay, we're going to sell this artwork. They bang the hammer down to say, okay, sale complete, right? And so as soon as they bang <laughs> the gavel down to say, okay, this artwork is sold for a million dollars, something interesting happens. The artwork shreds itself up through the frame that it's in. So it turns out Banksy had installed like a paper shredder in the bottom of this frame. And as soon as someone agreed, and you know, that's a binding deal. Yes, I'll pay a million dollars for that. The artwork destroyed itself. And um, <laughs> this guy likes to do a lot of like little tricks like that, talking about the value of art. Um, anyway, yeah, a pretty famous artist at this point, Banksy. And anytime I think of stencil art, I think of him. So there you go. Um, so let's talk about how we're actually going to do our art today. Let's see. So what I'm going to do, um, I want to stencil out. I like this idea of hope. So I'm going to use that word for my artwork. And I want to make kind of a, today's the first sunny day in like all week. So I'm actually feeling somewhat hopeful myself. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of sketch out what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to stencil it out using what's called contact paper. And I'll show you how this works. And I'll show you what you can do. Obviously, contact paper is pretty specialized. It's not something most people just have lying around their house. So I'll show you what you can do if you don't have contact paper at the end of this video, because you can make your own stencils too. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do stencils. You could, of course, cut out the shapes. So what I'm going to do is actually stick it down, almost like a sticker. Then I'll be able to paint over it and peel it off. You'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to have my kind of my word hope here. I'm going to have kind of an abstract sunshiny thing where I'm using blends of yellow paint. And for my background, I'm thinking I'll use some sort of blues or purples or something like that for the sky. So there's my basic idea for my artwork. Now, what I've done because I, I have to plan all this out as I go. So what I'm going to do is I've already kind of sketched out each individual little piece, and I'm going to show you how I do that with contact paper. But first, you have to plan if you're going to do a stencil art in multiple levels. So what I'm going to do, the first thing that I want showing through is the word, right? And I want that to be basically white, maybe with a little twinge of gray in there, just so it looks interesting. So here's my actual art paper. This is like the thickest paper I have at home. Again, we're all stuck at home using the materials that we have. So that's what I have. And uh, I'm going to just kind of do a base of color here down here at the bottom. So I've got some acrylic paint that I just had lying around the house. I have a couple of paint brushes. You could really do this, I'm sure, with any style of paint. And actually, I'm going to hold off there on the black. And I just want to paint kind of a nice little area of white paint here. And I want to blend just a tiny little bit of gray into that because I want my letters to have just a touch of gray. So why in the world am I sitting here painting white paint on white paper? It's so I have something to blend into in just a minute. Okay, so getting that nice and wet. The only reason I don't have anything down right now is I'm not painting all the way to the edge of my paper. Take a little touch of black. Again, anytime you're mixing paint, you want to use a very small amount of the darker color, a lot of the lighter color. As you can see, that turns dark real quick. 
I want this really light gray. So just a little touch in there. Oh man, you can see how dark that turned immediately, actually. So that's a little darker than I wanted it, honestly. Let's see if we can blend it out. Well, maybe it's going to be a little darker. That'll be okay, I'm sure. Let's see if we can blend out a little more white into it. That's working. That's lightening it up a little bit. Okay. So that is going to be kind of the color showing through on my letters. Just that fade of white into that very, very light gray. That's really all I want there. Okay. Cool. So now what I need to do is let that dry completely because I'm about to put a little sticker on it. So I'm going to show you really quick while I'm letting that dry how this stuff works. So this right here is contact paper and you can see it's kind of just shiny and clear on one side and on the other side it has this little, it's almost like the back of a sticker. So what I've done so I can make sure I've got everything just how I want it. I'm gonna have my word hope right across the middle here and I've cut out each letter on a nice thick piece of cardstock and I've cut out a little piece of contact paper that's roughly the right size. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is just stapling these together and cutting them. That way I'm sure I have all the shapes that I want. So I'll show you a little bit about how that's gonna work and then I'll let this dry and show you what's next. Okay, so gonna take this and just staple it right to my contact paper. Again, I've got the back side of the contact paper on the back because when I stick it down, I want it right side up, obviously. Cool, there we go. And I've done all my other little letters and everything the same way. I've got my little circle here I'm gonna use for my sun. Now again, you probably don't have contact paper just lying around at home. So uh, at the end of the video here, I'll show you a way you can do some stenciling in a similar way if you just have masking tape and wax paper, you can do basically the same thing. And of course, my stencils I'm using, I'm putting them down like stickers that I'll peel off later. You could also do stencils where you just cut out the shape and paint on the inside of it, like we'd normally think of a stencil as working. But since I'm doing my multi-layered, I'm gonna do it the other way. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so at this point, again, this is just sitting here to dry. I really need to let that sit probably for a good 30 minutes or an hour until I'm sure it's dry before I put any stuff on it. But while I'm waiting on that, I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of cutting out my contact paper stencils. All I have is these huge scissors, unfortunately. I honestly wish I had smaller scissors because I'm cutting kind of small shapes, but you got to use what you got at home. So... All right, so at this point, I'm done cutting out my letters and everything. Uh, I don't feel like my paint is quite dry enough to put that contact paper on yet. So I'm just going to let it sit here for another 20, 30 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And I will be back in a minute when I feel like it's dry. Well, I got to thinking about it. This isn't quite dry enough yet, I think, to put my words. But I have plenty of room, so I think I'm safe to go ahead and paint the area that I'm going to use for my sun. So I'm going to cut that out really quickly and make sure I have enough room, which I think I will, and I can go ahead and paint this part too. And then I can stick down those little stencils once that paint is all totally dry. And then I'll have two layers left, which are my kind of sunbeams and my sky. One of the things I'm trying to do is make sure I keep everything. So I'm doing my lighter colors first. So obviously that light gray is very, very light. Let's see, I think my sun's gonna go right there, which might overlap a teeny tiny bit, but I, I think I can definitely paint that, so. 
Yeah, so if I paint to about here, I'm going to be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that part. I want to do kind of a uh, really light yellow for that sun bit, and then I'll use some maybe darker golden yellow, maybe a little bit of orange for my actual sun beams. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, and then we can let all that dry. And then I can do my first layer of stencils on that. Let's see. I'm just going to start with some white. Same idea as I did for my gray. I just want to get a lot of white down so I have something to blend into. And then I'll go around and add a little touch of yellow on that and kind of fade it in as I go. If it's possible to add a little touch. I tried to add a little touch of gray. It went a little bit, a little bit bigger than I expected it to. So let's see, a tiny touch here of yellow. Let's see if we can actually make a tiny touch of yellow. Again, at this point, I know the words aren't going to take up that much space, so it'd be fine. My paint's drying. Oh no, I need more wet paint. There we go. Lighter and lighter as I get to the middle. I'm blending with that white that's already there. And then back out. And do a little bit more of that yellow around the edge. Go overboard with it. Because again, I do want this to be a light yellow, but I still want it to be yellow. And then my sun rays will fade from kind of that lighter yellow, more of a gold color, maybe a little bit of orange in there. Maybe one more, just patch a plain old white in the middle, blend it out, and call it a day on the sun. Yep, I think that's going to do it. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to let that dry. Then I'll put down my stencil for my sun and my words, and then I'll be ready to let that dry. And next layer will be the... Uh, the rays in the sky. So again, a lot of waiting in this style of art, but hey, so I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. And when that's dry, I'll come back and show you what's next. So yeah. Okay, so paint's dry. We're ready to go ahead with our first layer of stenciling. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little sun piece right here. We're going to cover up the spot that we've got painted for our sun. Put that right in the center. Rub outward from the middle. Once I've got everything stuck down, I'll rub on the back of the paper to make sure it's as stuck as I can possibly get it. And down here where my kind of gray is, that's where we're gonna do our, our letters, our words. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all those down. Okay, so we've got all of our first layer of sticker stencil things in place. You can kind of see where that is. So in theory, when I paint over top of this, those colors now, the yellow and the kind of gray and the words aren't going to get covered up. If I get everything stuck down all the way, hopefully. Also, hopefully when I peel them off, it's not going to peel that paint off. We'll see. So just to make sure everything's totally super stuck, I'm going to flip this whole guy over. I'm going to take... 
I like to use like old, you know, food lion cards for this. Anything that's hard and flat, you can use to kind of brush over and really make sure it's stuck. If you don't have anything like this, that's fine too. Just use your hands, push down hard and rub. It'll, it'll work fine. So all I'm doing is making sure that this is really stuck down. The reason I flipped it over to do this is because if I was scraping this over the paper on the front, it would, it would peel off my little sticker stencils and that's not what I'm trying to do. Okay, so, and in fact, what I like about that is you can actually kind of see that it's really getting those edges down, which is what we want. Okay, cool. So hopefully our word and our sun are now protected from paint. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint everything that's going to be my next level, which is going to be my rays of sun coming out. So I'm going to have a bunch of sun rays coming from here. For this part, I'm going to use kind of a yellow orange-ish, maybe fading from yellow close to the sun, more toward orange, out toward the edge. I actually looked for orange paint and I do not have any, but thankfully I have my primary colors. So a little bit of red and some yellow is going to make kind of an orangish color. So let's shift into painting mode. I'm going to be painting all the way to the edge of my paper. Now, once I've got this part, I'm going to use another layer of stickers to tape off the sun rays and then paint the sky with maybe a blue or a purple. So that's the game plan. That's where we're headed with this. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and do the part that will be my sun rays. So let's do it. Got a little bit of yellow. Got a little bit of, maybe I'll just make some orange ahead of time. That way I can blend them together on the paper, kind of like I did the white and the yellow over here. So let's see. Just a tiny touch of red, because again, dark colors are always more powerful, stronger than light colors. If I mixed equal parts red and yellow, it wouldn't even look orange at all, it would look red. We always need to use just a little bit. And I might add in some more red into that later on, but for now, I think that's looking good. So here we go. Starting with the kind of plain yellow up here near my sun. And I just wanna make sure I spread my paint out and don't leave huge globs of paint because if I do, it's gonna risk getting down underneath the little sticker and that's not what I want. Also, this is not super thick paper, so the more paint I put, the more wrinkly and stuff it's gonna get as it dries. So trying to spread it out so it's not super, super thick. Maybe I will start blending in a little bit of this gold color. Oh, that didn't change it much at all. Maybe I'll use more of that. I'm gonna give it something to blend into. So I'm gonna put down kind of some wet little blobs of the regular yellow. Now I'll just start using that gold color so it has something to blend into. There we go. That's looking like I want it to. And we'll go from this kind of goldish color to more of an actual orange in just a moment. Ooh. That looks a little more natural. You can see more of that orange in there now. So we'll use that. Uh, so at this point, just using that gold color I already had mixed up. And in just a moment, I'm gonna mix up more of a regular orangish tone into that. But I wanna have a decent amount of this color down so I have something to mix into. All right, so quickly, I'm gonna add a little bit more red to that guy. Don't wanna go nuts with it, because this is gonna look real orange real quick, as you can see. Ooh, that's real orange. Yeah. What was I expecting? I guess that's exactly what I was expecting. Hmm. 
Okay. So we'll see if we can get that to blend a little bit. My paint's starting to dry up, so it's not blending super well, unfortunately. Do I have another brush? I, whoa! <laughs> I'm losing my paint brushes over here. Use kind of a dry brush technique to try to blend that in a little bit. There we go. So I just cleaned off some of that paint on my little uh, placemat over here. Cool. And now we'll really blend that into kind of a regular plain old orange down here. Maybe a little bit of that darker orange over here on this side. Now, I'm not even sure right now where those sun rays are going to be yet. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So, that's pretty much it. So, as the sun rays come out, they'll have this look of that yellow fading to orange. Hopefully, if everything works out to plan. Right now, what I need to do is give this whole painting a nice long time to dry here because it is pretty soaked in paint right now and I do not want to put any more contact paper on until what I've already got is like dry 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 so I'm gonna clean up my paint brushes for a minute let this sit here and start to dry I'll give it maybe 30 minutes maybe an hour we'll see and uh, yeah after that I'll tape off my sun rays and I'll do my final layer which is gonna be my sky I'm thinking kind of a bluish purplish tone to that so that's where we're going uh, I'll see you guys in just a minute Okay, the ray colors of the sun are dry. And as you can see, I've already cut and assembled kind of the sun rays that are going to come out. So our next goal is to put all these down, get them really nice and stuck, and then we'll paint our blue sky over that. And then when we peel it off, what's left over will be our sun rays. So I'm going to go ahead and work on getting all of this stuck all the way down. And then we'll go ahead and do our... Uh, our painting of our sky. So I'm going to start just to make sure I have everything nice and even. I'm going to start with one going straight down from the bottom and one going straight up from the top. I can, I know it's hard to see on here, but I can actually see where the uh, sun stops on here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get all these stuck. Okay, so I've got all of my little sun ray stencils stuck down, um, hopefully in close to the right place. So I'm going to flip this whole guy over, really, really make sure everything's stuck. Going kind of from the middle of the sun out with my little card here. Again, you can totally do this with your hand, just push and rub hard. I just like making sure it's really really stuck especially since I've already got since I've already got a layer of paint down I don't want the new paint to seep underneath this layer and mess up the other one okay so we're about ready to do our last coat of paint our last layer which is going to be our sky I want like a nice light kind of bluish purplish color so I'm going to go ahead and get some colors mixed up and then we're just going to kind of paint right over the whole thing just like we did the first time and hopefully my stencils will hold out and it'll look half decent we'll see I really don't know okay so I need to get myself a little newspaper or something to paint on for sure there we go so I've already kind of poured myself some purples here and again let's see which way do the colors look better yeah that looks more like what I'm seeing in real life so let's do it that way or does it uh, it's hard to tell so I got some purple here I'm gonna try to mix a couple different versions of light purple and ooh, uh oh that ain't gonna be light that was way too much oops I'm using a little toothpick here to kind of get everything mixed up so I at least know generally which colors I'm looking at. 
Well, that's more of a bluish purple. The first one's kind of a reddish lilac. Again, it's hard to get the camera to really focus and give you the colors that look like the colors you want. Uh, none of those quite look like real life, but whatever. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I almost started freaking out. I got a little tiny drip of paint there. I'm about to paint over top of everything. I don't think it's that big a deal. Okay. Let's see. Let's do some blues. Maybe we'll do some... Uh... Ooh. I'm going to do kind of a darker purplish blue. Sorry, I had to go grab it. Brand new bottle. There we go. Good enough. Probably not the best way to do it, but that's what I got. Ooh, yeah, I like that blue. So, let's see. Mix that with white, what do we get? Yeah, that looks great. That's just about exactly what color I was looking for. Probably need a little more of it though. Add a little more white to that. And then my last one, I'm gonna do kind of a cyan, hopefully kind of a very light greenish sky blue almost. We'll see if we can get it. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do a little touch of this guy right here. Again, these are just random paints I had hanging around my house. Uh, it's get shook up. That one's not quite mixed. A little bit of that. And I'm going to do just a tiny little touch of green in this one. Let's see where that gets us. That was not a tiny touch. <laughs> we'll see. Yep, too much green, way too much green. Way too much green. That's not what I'm looking for at all. All right, let's try a little bit more of that blue in there. Gotta make sure we mix our paints here. I'll see if that does anything. And again, the only reason I'm using the toothpick to mix is I kind of want to know what colors these are going to be before I start. So I'm not, you know, when you're doing this style of painting, you want it to be nice and wet. So that's more like the color I had in mind. But it's not quite as light as I wanted it. So maybe we'll take some of that and mix it in. Do some white. Let's see where, where that gets us. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That nice light sky blue color. And you take a little bit of that and put it in here. That's what I was looking for. We'll skip that guy. I think that's more what I want. So, since we're about to start painting over top of all this, some of this is really dark down here, especially where we've got our, uh, like, reddish colors, right? So I might have to do a couple of coats of this to really make it work. So I'm thinking I'm going to go from this lilac purple around my sun and then get kind of more and more toward that light sky blue color as I go. So let's see what happens. All right. Moment of truth here. Starting with this. And then let's paint. Now again, to really get all of this covered, I'm going to have to use kind of a lot of paint. You can see already the way you're seeing. Well, maybe you can't see it. 
See how you can see streaks of yellow underneath? I really want to make sure I like cover all this up. So I might have to do two coats of this paint and let it kind of dry in between, which is fine. Also, the paint's always going to look streaky on top of the, um, the contact paper because the contact paper is like slick. It doesn't really uh, absorb the paint at all. So that's pretty normal. I don't have to super worry about that. Okay. All right, not bad, not bad. Let's keep going with this purple here. And I think it's about time to start adding in some blue. I probably should have started adding in some blue a while ago. There we go. Yeah. I like that way that blue is kind of fading into that purple. That's what I want. That's what I'm getting. That's what I like. So, now at this point, my blue's almost kind of taken over my purple. And you know what? That might be okay because it is supposed to be the sky after all, except for, oops, I forgot my very top corner. That's no good. That's no good. We'll see if we can blend that in. Okay, again, I might do a second coat of this anyway, so we'll see. All right, fade that on out. I think we are definitely gonna do a second coat of this, actually. I could see the gray even through the first coat, so. Yeah, and at this point I'm out into my kind of cyan, bluish, greenish color. We'll blend that in. And then we'll probably go right back where we started and just hit the whole thing with another coat of paint. I am liking this though. I, I feel like these colors are blending really nicely. I like the way they look. Hopefully they look good with the colors underneath, but hey, we're all gonna see together, aren't we? Okay. Not bad. Okay. So I think I'm gonna let all of that sit and dry for just a moment. And then uh, maybe I'll hit it one more time with another coat of just basically the same old thing. And uh, that purple blending into the blue, just to make sure we got all those uh, darker spots covered up. And then we'll see where we're at. So yeah, all right. So I'm gonna let it sit for a couple minutes and We'll see what happens. Okay, so it's just a couple minutes later. Um, I wouldn't say that that paint is fully dry yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit it one more time. I washed off my brush, so I'm gonna start over. I thought about one thing, the word that I had, the very bottom layer, hope, the white and gray part. I want there to be enough contrast between the light blue sky and the whitish grayish part. So I'm going to add a little bit of a darker blue down at the bottom just to make sure we have enough contrast and you can really see the word when we're done. So I'm basically just going to hit all of this again, starting with that kind of light purple here at the top. And I'm just basically going to do the same thing again. The only reason I'm doing this is to really make sure that we've got a nice even coat of paint over top of everything else and that nothing else is gonna you know show through i don't want my yellow showing through except for where they're actually supposed to show through i guess i'll remember to actually do the top part this time eh? okay so we've got our second layer of purple. And I'm gonna go ahead and start shifting into my blue so I have enough room to make my kind of darker blue as I get down there. So here's my blues. Blend it in. Need more of that blue, especially down here. At 
this point, my painting is really pretty wet. So I need to be careful with how I'm blending everything. All right. One last coat of this. Oh, I got more purple down in there. Oops. All right, we'll switch to that kind of lighter greenish blue. And then I'm going to use some of the basically the same color as this lightish greenish blue but i'm going to make it darker actually i need to do that right now don't i otherwise it's not even going to show up in my word so let's go ahead and do that right now again my paper is really really kind of coated with paint at this point so i'm just going to go back and forth and blend and blend and blend until everything Starts to look halfway like I want it to, hopefully, maybe. All right, then let's get a little last touch of that darker color down here. Okay. Well, hopefully that darker blue is kind of dark enough that we get some contrast in there. Yes, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So at this point, I just need to wait for this paint to get dry enough that I can peel off the sticker stencil things, and hopefully they actually come off. Hey, if they don't and the whole thing falls apart and gets ruined, I'll show you that too because sometimes you spend the whole day doing something and that's how it goes. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but hey, we'll see in a minute. I'm going to wait for that to dry enough that I can actually go back and start peeling those stickers off, so I'll check back with you guys in just a minute. All right, I think it's dry enough to start taking the, uh, the little stencils off here. Here comes the fun part, seeing if this whole thing worked or not, or if it's a total disaster. So let's go. So. That looks okay. Pretty good. That's looking pretty good. All right, maybe, maybe this whole thing turned out okay. Let's see. Uh-oh. So we got a little bit of uh, a little bit of some kind of paint catching on the edge of the paper. That might be a thing we see more of as we go. We'll see. But hey, that's the risk you run, I guess, when you're doing art in this style, huh? Oh, I was having a little bit of trouble there. So we get that kind of sun sunburst effect we were looking for, for sure. I'm a little nervous about whether the uh, whether the word actually showed up okay or not. We'll see in just a moment. Looks like most of the sun stuff turned out great. We'll see. Can we get the actual sun itself off? Do I have a spot where I can pull from? I have to find one. Ooh, the sun is really, really stuck down, so I gotta be careful pulling this guy off. That makes me a little worried about how my letters are going to turn out. Definitely wound up with more of a purple sky than blue, but that's okay. Cool. There's my sun. Let's see what happened with the letters.
All right. So there's our artwork. So my game plan at this point is I'm going to let that sit and really dry because it is actually still like you can tell the paper is still wet. So I'm going to let that sit and actually dry. And then I'm probably going to mount it just with like glue or glue stick onto a bigger piece of like cardstock because it is super, super wrinkly because that's what happens when you paint on paper instead of canvas. But that's all I had at home. So yeah, there's my little artwork. Not too bad. I kind of dig it. Let's see if this looks better or worse. Oh. Yeah, that looks more like it looks in real life, I think. Again, the gray didn't, didn't super show up at all. Maybe once I mount it on white, you'll be able to see it. I don't know. But all in all, pretty cool artwork. I like it. We'll see how it goes. So uh, I'm going to give it just a little bit of time to dry. Then I'll mount it. And uh, yeah, I did not forget. I'm going to show you guys also the... Um, what to do if you're trying to do this type of thing and you don't have contact paper, you can do it with masking tape, wax paper. I'll show you that in just a moment. So yeah, so far, so good. Oh, one more thing. I, uh, I told you guys I was going to show you a way you can make, uh, you know, not many people just have contact paper sitting around the house. And even if you do, sometimes it's a little uh, tricky to use because it always wants to roll up. So you can make this type of kind of sticker stencil even if you don't have contact paper, if you have wax paper or parchment paper, which most people a lot of times will have in their kitchen, if you got that and masking tape, you can make your own stencils kind of using the same idea. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So all I'm going to do here is take some of this tape and just kind of tape it flat to this parchment paper, wax paper. Anything like that will work that has that kind of waxy finish on it because then you'll be able to pull the tape off of it again without, you know, the tape just sticking to it. Now the tape sticking to itself, on the other hand, might be a little bit of a problem, apparently. There we go. All right. Wow. It's like I'm just not using very good tape. Eh, that's all right. We'll just, I was gonna do two demonstrations, but we'll just do one. So you can overlap, depending on how big you want that stencil to be, you can overlap as many pieces of tape as you want. So let's say we got our little stencil here. I guess it's gonna be a little smaller than I wanted it to, that's fine. And you know, whatever shape, maybe I'm gonna make mine into like a star. This is also nice because you can just draw right on your tape. Now the trick is going to come when you peel the tape off of your wax paper because you have to make sure you peel it off the right way or the whole thing falls apart. So we'll see if I can actually do it or not. So when you get ready to get to the point where you're trying to take your stencil apart, you have to make sure that you start pulling it apart from whichever part of the tape is underneath the rest. So we can see right here, the left side of mine is on top. The right side is going underneath. So I want to start peeling from whatever the underneath side is. Because if I start peeling from this side, it'll just peel off the top piece. So I'm going to try to start peeling here from this bottom side and see what I can get. Oh, there's a little bit. It can be tricky to get the very corner off, but there it is. This is actually a tricky thing to do with the uh, the contact paper as well. I just had the video and fast forward when I did that part. Okay, so there we go. Look, we got a little 
star sticker. Now, before really investing in a whole lot of time on this, what I suggest doing, you wanna have some paper that the masking tape isn't gonna fully stick down to. So, let me show you what I mean. I would check your paper first. So what I have here is thicker like cardstock paper. And whenever I put a stencil down, you probably saw me do this earlier in the video. What I'm gonna do is take something hard and flat and maybe flexible. And I'm just gonna rub that over pushing down with this upside down on the table. And it makes sure it's really, really stuck down. Now, of course, the problem is if you've got paper that the masking tape really binds to, it won't work because when you try to pull it up, you'll rip up your paper. So let's see if this type of paper works with masking tape. I'm actually not sure. There we go. So I got my stencil down. You know, let's just kind of do whatever here. Now, obviously, I could be painting, you know, I could be doing whatever I want, but I got my kind of sticker stencil just down there waiting on me. Again, if you're using paint, I would test it with a small stencil just to make sure the paint doesn't soak through. It seemed to do fine with my contact paper, I think, at least on the one I did the other day. Cool. So let's see if it'll actually peel up. It might and it might not. Now, just like when I peeled it off the wax paper, I want to find the bottom piece, the part that goes under the other part. So that's this one. And I'll start peeling from there. And I'm going to peel gently and hopefully it won't rip up my paper. Yep. So that worked great, right? And I assume I could have colored, you know, under that first, then put the stencil down, and then I would have had other colors showing through. So yeah, you can you can make your own just with wax paper and masking tape if you have those things at home. Um, what I used was called contact paper. Either way, it basically works the same way. So that's how you can do it uh, on your own if you don't have contact paper. All right, cool. See y'all later.